right, here we are again. Um, Blake, why don't you bring that up to me? Okay. Okay. You can just hand it to me. Okay. You want to be? You want to be on camera? You're too tall. We'd have to have the wide angle lens this way. Okay. Hey, we just took a quiz here um, in class. So you folks at home, why don't you just pause this for a second? and take this quiz yourself. And then we'll go over the answers and you can see how you did. All right? So, uh, classifying cash flows is a very important thing, okay? So, all right, let's go over this. If I can zoom in a little bit more there. Okay. Um, collected cash principal on a long-term note receivable. That is an investing activity. Purchased inventories for cash. Operating. Operating. Yep. Purchased some equipment for the business. Investing. 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 Paid cash dividends. <coughs> Finance. Finance. Financing. Paid monthly rent. Operating. Operating. Converted preferred stock to common stock. The non-cash. Non-cash. That is a non-cash. Non-cash. Okay. Perform consulting services for cash. Operating. Operating. Borrowed cash by taking out a long-term loan. Investing. Financing. Financing. Ooh. Oh. Received that. cash interest. Operating. Operating. Anything regarding interest, payment, or receipt of is an operating. Bought a long-term investment in another company. Investing. Financing. What is it? Oh, it's investing. It's long-term investment. Do I make this an F or an I? I. Financing or it's investing? An I. It's an I. I. Well, long-term investment. That's an investment. Yeah, that's investing. Mm -hmm. It's long-term too, so it's yes. It's on that side. It's on this side. Damn. So that is an investing activity. I didn't miss one. I missed, I missed two. Okay. So there are your Damn answers. Ten. Did Let's anybody go. get all ten out of ten? Maybe. All right. Let's go. Proud of you guys. Okay. If you missed a lot of these, then you need to study them better, okay? Because um, that will be on the test. And like I said with the cash flow statement, if you don't know where these things go um, on, the, on the cash flow statement, you're not going to be able to produce a meaningful cash flow statement, okay? Is everybody doing good? Sleepy? Yeah, that game went late again. Yeah, there was a baseball game here. Went till what midnight, and then I'm always amped up. Then I have to watch Sports Center. It's very exciting. <laughs> um, so I put on Royals Live just so I can see the joke. Yeah. I got a phone call from somebody in London today. Somebody in London. Phone call. It's 2 p.m. There it was 8 a.m. my time, and he watches these videos and he he wanted to just talk to me and see how see how things were going. Isn't that interesting? So, talk to somebody in London. You never know you better who's. Better have Vonage. Huh? You better have Vonage. Those he, overseas prices are going to get you. Well, he called me. Touche. He called me. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's fun to hear about from people all over. I get these emails. It's kind of kind of interesting. All right, let's do a little bit of review, okay? Um, let's do a little bit of review about the cash flow statement, and then we'll go over the homework, okay? Let's show the computer screen. Okay, we talked about the purpose of the cash flow statement. Where do we spend our money? Where do we get our money? Uh, did our balance of cash go up or down? Can we repay our loans or do we have to get some more loans? We talked about cash equivalents. We talked about these very three important sections of the cash flow statement. The operating, the investing, and the financing sections. And we talked about how you need to be able to classify those sort of cash flows so that you could prepare your cash flow statement and put things in the right place, right? Okay. And we just had a quiz over operating cash flows, investing cash flows, financing cash flows, and we talked about this category of non-cash investing and financing cash flows. Those transactions that actually do not involve cash, but they are so significant that we do need to let the reader know about them in maybe a separate footnote or something to the cash flow statement. We talked about how there's two acceptable methods 
to determining cash flows from operating activities. Is that right? Okay. Um, here's a couple slides I did not have in your handouts, but, but just look at them, okay? This is a cash flow statement, uh, and this is the indirect method. And you can see the 141,000, the 45,000, and the 55,000, right? We talked about how there's the indirect method, which is right, says right there. And then we talked about how there is the direct method, right? And the direct method comes up with those same three numbers, but concentrate on the top third of these cash flow statements as I switch back and forth. Notice that the bottom two-thirds does not change at all, does it? Not in one bit. The difference between the indirect method and the direct method are simply how we arrive at that $141,000, okay? Now, we're not going to learn this method, the direct method, because it's hardly ever used, okay, in practice. We're going to learn the indirect method, and that's what we started talking about last time, okay? So we'll just learn the indirect method. And then we talked about how you start off with net income, which is from the income statement, which is prepared on the accrual basis. And we do these three things to it, right? We add back our non-cash expenses. We handle our losses and gains. And then we analyze the changes in our current assets and current liabilities. And the ending result will be a cash flows from operating activities prepared under the indirect me method, okay? I think they give you an example. Oh, then we talked about this chart. Okay. Talked about the importance of knowing current assets and current liabilities. So that brings us to what we are doing now, which was uh, the handout of the, of the 20. Actually, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, remind me to show you the answers to the time value money homework before we leave today. Okay. Probably should have done that first. All right. Um, let's take a look at the answers. Uh, we went through answers one through five, right? Mm -hmm. And we went through answers, I think we even went through answers six through ten. Is that correct? Okay. But now let's show the answers on um, 11 forward. Okay. All right, let me zoom in. You can just show that while I talk. Uh, now, again, make sure you're not just putting this. Make sure you're writing out how you arrive at the number, because that's what we want to do. Is if, if you do that, not just give me the number, but how we arrive at the number, then you're learning how to do a cash flow statement. Okay? Any questions on 11 through 13? I think I gave you check figures as well, didn't I? Okay, let's take a look at 14 and 15. Again, when this is a negative number, it's correct to say cash flows used by operating activities. And when it's positive, it's cash flows from operating activities. Um, I would not take off if you said it the wrong way, as long as you had the number correct. Sometimes I just say net operating cash flows. Okay. So there's the answers to 14 and 15. Okay. Any questions on those? All right, let's take a look at the others. Uh, there's 16 and 17. Take a look at those. Any questions on 16 and 17? Now I'm giving you some other stuff to try to trick you, right? Maybe giving you some long-term assets or some long-term liabilities, correct? Now remember, we don't analyze the change in those. We do not analyze the change in those in this operating section. Just current assets and current liabilities. Okay. All right, there's the answer to 16 and 17. Here's the answer to 18 and 19. We had a net loss here, so that top number is actually a negative number, isn't it? Okay. All right. Any, any questions there, folks? All right. Then you had number 20. Is that correct? Uh, did anybody get that answer doing it? Okay. I like number 20 because it's kind of more real world, isn't it? Right? You, uh, let me show you the answer to 20. 
There's the answer to 20. But you pull this net income off the income statement, right? Um, here's a common question. That depreciation expense came from the income statement, correct? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people ask me, should I get depreciation expense from the income statement or should I be looking at the accumulated depreciation accounts and looking what the change is? Always take depreciation expense off of the income statement. Same thing with depletion or amortization or bad debt. Okay? So always take that, those items off of the income statement. Um, and then we had a couple, you had to figure out actually the differences between AR, inventory, AP, and salaries payable. Is that correct? Okay. Um, okay. Any questions on 1 through 20? Okay, let me tell you something real important here. Okay. I'm going to ask you this on the test. This is lecture 218. We have 219 and then the test, right? I'm going to ask you how to do these on the test, but I do not give partial credit, okay? Take a, take a look at, let's just zoom in on 20 for a second, okay? Let's say that this was um, a test question. You know, I want you as we're doing these to write this out for your sake, but when it comes test time, I am only looking this will be like worth three points, and I will only look to see if you have that number, okay? If you don't have that number, you won't get any points. If you do have that number, you'll get three points. But what I'm not going to do is say, oh, well, Joe got a different number. Let me, try, let me try to figure out what he did. No, I'm not going to do that, okay? It's all or nothing, baby, okay? Now, it is extremely easy to make a to get this 95% right and to make a silly mistake. I'm sure you guys did that in your homework, did you not? You would check your answer against the check figures and you'd go, oh, well this is wrong, oh, yeah, I shouldn't be adding that, I should be subtracting it, right? Like it is so easy to like, oh, I accidentally added my increase in inventory and then the whole number's wrong and you don't get any points even though that you got the rest of it right, okay? So let me tell you, the best way to do these, okay, on the test. The best way to do these is to solve for them and then go do some of the rest of your test and then completely cover up your answer. Completely cover up your answer and all the work that you did and do it again. Does that make sense? And see if you arrive at the same answer. Just completely cover your work. Here's what students do, because they sometimes get a little lazy, is they'll, they'll make a mistake. They don't want to do it again. They're in a hurry. So they just look over it to see if they did it right, and this will be added in properly, and they'll just look right back over it again. Do you see what I'm saying? They won't catch the air. It's kind of like when you write a paper for English, and you have somebody else proofread it, and they'll go, hey, you said the, the. You put an extra the there. You didn't need it. And you're like, I've looked at that thing 12 times and I didn't see it, right? So please don't get a false sense of security back, at the, back on the Elmo. Don't get a false sense of security that if you just look over what you did, you're going to catch your errors. No. Completely cover it up and do it again. My best students, I'll actually see the answer written complete, uh, twice on their uh, test. Now I give you a blank where I want you to put your definite answer. You can't just give me multiple choice there, okay? So, but it's a great way to catch your errors. Does that make sense? And that works a lot of times on a lot of different things in accounting. <coughs> Cover up your work if you have the time and do it again to see if you arrived at the same answer. And you will avoid making those little, you know, silly mistakes, okay? I see people all the time they leave with 12, 15 minutes left in the test and then they'll get back their test and they'll, they'll have made eight or nine silly mistakes that if they would have just gone over their test again, they probably could have caught. You see what I'm saying? Word of the wise. All right. No questions on that handout? Okay. We're going to do some other stuff with the cash flow statement. But um, before I forget, I did give you some homework on the time value of money, right? And I did that because the test is approaching 
and I wanted that information to kind of bubble up to the top of your brain again. So, because it was a little while ago that we did that. Okay? So I'm not going to talk through this too much besides giving the answers. But this um, time value of money handout number three that we're looking at right here, here you had to decide if it was a P of A problem or a P of F problem, right? Okay? So remember if it's a recurring cash flow that they're discussing, it is a P of A problem. Like the, um, you're going, how much will you have to pay at the end of each month, right? Okay? So it's a P of A problem. Always ask, is your answer reasonable? Okay? This is another example where if you have time, cover up your answer and do it again and see if you arrive at the same answer. I'll have a lot of students get in a hurry and they'll pull the wrong value off of the table. Okay? How are you guys doing on memorizing those tables? Do you just have them about done? Yeah. Okay, now I'll provide you the tables for the test. Okay? Any questions on one or two? Okay, let's take a look at three and four. Three is that one where we actually have a P of F problem and a P of A problem, right? And they're actually different periods. It gives you 5,000 in five years, but it also pays you 250 at the end of each of the next four years, right? So what would you pay for that if it did both of those things? The sum of those answers, which is that. And again, if you're off by, you know, a dollar or less, it's probably just a rounding issue, all right? Okay, then I, I certainly don't take off for that. Okay, any questions on three and four on the time value money handout? Yeah, Daniel. Can I see the answer to one again? You want to see the answer to one again? <coughs> There's the answer to one. Okay. Okay, you can just, you can keep showing that on the screen while I pass something else out to you. Okay, any other questions on time value money handout number three? If not, real quick, and you folks at home, this is in your handout, uh, I have a review for the test. Sometimes people like to have those, okay? So that gives you an idea of what's going to be on test number two over time value of money, chapter 14 and the first part of chapter 16. Now I want to note something. On this test, on this test, you are not required to do a full cash flow statement. I still haven't taught you how to do a whole cash flow statement, have I? We've only done the operating section, correct? We're going to learn about the rest of it today. And even though we're learning about it today, you will not be asked to do a full cash flow statement on the test, on this test. You with me? Okay, so any questions on any items on that review sheet? That should help you. All right. Okay, what are we going to do now? Let me look at my notes here. What I want to do now is take a look at this. I'm going to... Jeremiah, will you hand out one of these? We had to hand out stuff the other day when you were gone. It was like we didn't know what to do. Why? We, we did use your name. Okay. All right. Uh, here's what I want you to do. Is um, I want you to get this OTW Corporation handout, folks. And what I want you to do is I want you to figure out and calculate the cash flows from operating activities just like you did on number 20 on the handout we just did. Okay? And, but here's the key. I want you to make sure you do this. Everybody look at the screen here. Start this on a brand new piece of paper and, and do it at the very top. Okay? Because we're going to add on to the bottom of it so I don't want you to start, you know, on the bottom of a page or something. I want you to have a full page for what we're going to do. Okay, so get a new piece of paper out, fig, fill out or, or calculate and fill out in a proper form. Don't just calculate it, but
but show how it's calculated like I like it, but calculate the cash flows from operating activities for OTW, why they play that music, okay? All right, thank you. See you in a few minutes.
All right, let's go through that. Um, for you folks at home, the answer you should have got was 216,000, 216,000. So if you didn't get that, maybe you want to pause, take a look at your work, see if you, see if you can find your mistake. But let's go over that, all right? Okay, switch to that. Let's see. Okay, can you see that back there all right, Luke? Yeah? Okay, we're going to do our operating cash flow section. Okay, uh, we have our net income that we pull off of the income statement of 301500, right? Do we have any non-cash expenses? Yes, we have depreciation expense, don't we? Do we have any gains or losses? No. We don't in this case. Those would be found on the income statement, right? Okay, we have some changes in some current assets. So I'm going to give me one of them. Increase in accounts receivable. We have an increase in accounts receivable, and per that little chart, we subtract that, correct? Mm -hmm. What's another one? Increase in inventory. We have an increase in inventory, a big increase in inventory. We subtract that, don't we? Okay. 112,500 is the difference. Okay. What's another one? Decrease in accounts payable. An AP, accounts payable decrease. Now we subtract decreases in current liabilities, right? Okay. And then one more. Uh, an increase in tax taxes payable. payable. Increase in income tax payable. Per the chart, we add that, correct? These parentheses obviously mean subtract. So when you add those together, we get 216,000. Is that correct? Now, what should, we, what should we call that number? I don't like to just have numbers. Cash flow from operating activities. All right, cash, cash provided by. Let's go cash flows from, and I'll make this a different font here in a second. Operating activities. Okay, cash flows from operating activities. Is that good? Spell that wrong. Yeah, you're right, thank you. Operating activities? Operating activities. Is that better? Okay, cash flows from operating activities. Okay? Okay, now, that is the first step in doing a cash flow statement. Are you with me? Now, let me tell you what the next step is. Listen carefully. This is good stuff. Okay? Let's go back over to the handout. At the bottom of your handout, you've got some additional information. Now, for homework purposes, this is given to you. This sort of information listed here is just given to you. In real life, this information would be readily available, okay, in your accounting records, okay? But what I want to do is for each of these transactions, I want to kind of act like it's the quiz we took. Uh, let's classify the cash flow. Let's say if it's an inflow or an outflow of cash and just visualize the situation. Are you paying out cash or are you receiving cash, okay? And then how much is it an inflow or outflow of? You with me? Okay. So, purchasing equipment for $54,000 cash. What type of activity is that? Investing. That's an investing activity. Is it an inflow or an outflow? <coughs> outflow. It is an outflow of cash. Outflow. Okay. And how much of cash is it outflow of how much? 54000 54000 right? So it's an investing activity, it's an outflow of 54000 correct? Okay, let's go to the next one. Issued 36,000 shares of common stock for 250 per share. What type of activity is that? Financing. It's a financing activity. Is it an inflow or an outflow? Inflow or outflow of cash? Inflow. 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 And how much cash inflowed? 90,000. How'd you get that, Luke? I agree. Uh, the number of shares times the amount per share. Yeah, 250 times 36,000. So it's an inflow of $90,000. Okay? Okay, declared and paid cash dividends of 166,500. What type of activity is that? It's a financing cash flow. Okay? Is it an inflow or outflow of cash? It is an outflow of cash, and how much cash outflowed? 166,500. 166, you with me? Now, 
That is the next step. The first step was to do this. The next step is to do this. Okay? And now we're going to use that information. Now I can't show these both at the same time, but be looking at this information as I do the following. Okay? Okay. We did our operating cash flows section, right? But now down here, we are going to do our other sections. So we are going to do our investing cash flows here. Okay. Well, we had one investing cash flow, correct? And what was that? Equipment. Per we, and we don't, ju don't just say equipment, okay? Don't just say equipment. Let's say purchased equipment. That's more descriptive, isn't it? Okay, now was that an inflow or outflow of cash? Outflow. It was an outflow, so this is going to be a negative number. How much cash outflowed? $54,000. Okay. Now that was the only investing cash flow we had, right? But I still want to make a subtotal here. And what should we call that? What do you think? Cash, cash flows used, used by. Cash investing. flows used by investing activities. Okay. You with me? That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Wasn't it pretty easy? Mm -hmm. Okay, what I want you to do now, folks, is, and I'll, they'll play that music for about a minute. I want you to do the financing cash flows section, okay? Using the same methodology that we used here, okay? So let's roll the music for about a minute and go ahead, you folks at home, do the same. Do the financing cash flow section using that information. Okay, let's take a look at that. We had two financing cash flows, is that correct? We issued common stock and we paid cash dividends, right? Looking at the computer. Okay, issued common stock, that was a cash inflow, right? So that's going to be a plus. How much cash flowed in? Okay. Paid cash dividends, inflow or outflow? Outflow. Outflow, outflow. so that's negative. How much cash flowed out? <coughs> Okay, now let's add those two numbers. Is that what you got when you added them? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so let's call that cash flows used by financing, financing activities. activities. You with me? Cool? Okay. These are pretty easy, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, 
we're going to do something here. I got to minimum. I got to make this a little smaller font so I can get this all on. Um, we have three numbers here, and let me highlight those in gold. We have our cash flows from operating activities. We have our cash flows from used by ac investing activities, and we have our cash flows from financing activities. Is that correct? Now, if I add those three numbers up, which I'm going to do, I get this number right here. Okay? I get this number right here. What do you think that that number, I know it's 85,500, but what do you think it represents? Total cash flow. The total cash that you've used or has gone out the, that year? Or that period? Uh, yeah, I think I heard it. Maybe said it a little different than what I would. But this is our net change in cash. Our net change in cash for this period. The total of those three gold numbers is our net change in cash. Since, it's a, since it is a positive number, we will call this an increase in cash. Now, if it was a negative number, it would be a decrease in cash. Is that correct? You with me? Okay. Now, here's my question. This is where it gets really good. Okay. Do we know if that number is, in fact, correct? <clears throat> when we add up those three numbers in gold, we get 85,500. And I say here, increase in cash. Do we know if that is, in fact, true? No. You said no. I'll give you one more guess. Yeah, we can. Yes. How do we, Matt? You just compare it to your cash and cash assets. Where would we find the cash? change? Uh, a balance sheet. The balance sheet. Take a look here. This is what's so wonderful about cash flow statements. Well, I've got the beginning balance of cash. This is the balance sheet, right? I've got the beginning balance of cash of 175500 and I have the ending cash <coughs> of 261000 right? So can take 175500 subtracted from 261000 is that, in fact, an 85,500 increase? It is. It is. Okay? Now, why is this such a wonderful thing? Well, let's go back to the cash flow statement. Because this is how you complete the cash flow statement. You take your increase in cash, you add it to the beginning balance of cash, and that should equal your ending balance of cash. What was our beginning balance of cash? Uh, 175,500. Okay. And this should add up to the ending balance of cash of 261,000, doesn't it? Okay. You with me? Now, let me get off the close full screen so I can underline this. Okay. Now, here is the beautiful part. Listen to me. This information in blue, this information in blue, we have from the very beginning before we do anything. Do we not? Mm -hmm. Do we not know our beginning balance of cash? Yes, we do, from the balance sheet. Do we not know our ending balance of cash? It is from the balance sheet as well. Thus, we can figure out if cash increased or decreased and by how much. Are you with me? So we know, and by the way, this section in blue right here, that's not just a self-checking mechanism. That is part of the cash flow statement that needs to be on there, okay? But we know from the very beginning, folks, that this number right here, this 85,500, we know that those three numbers in gold have to add up to 85,500. Are you with me? Think of this as a puzzle. You know the answer to the puzzle. And now you just have to figure it out. Now, one of the wonderful things about this is it's, if you're doing a complete cash flow statement, now you're not going to have to do a complete cash flow statement for the test. Eventually, you will have to. 
But when you do a complete cash flow statement, if you make a silly little error, you, will, you can catch it. Like what I will do is when I'm doing a cash flow statement, I'll figure up what I know those three gold numbers need to equal. And I'll put it out here to the side. Now let's say I accidentally added this increase in accounts receivable. Okay. Well, these numbers, I know that number needs to equal 85,500 and it doesn't, does it? So I know I've made a mistake. Now I've done enough of these where when that happens I figure out the difference, which in this case I think is 36,000. And then I look for like half that and I go, oh, yeah. I increase in accounts receivable, I don't add that, I subtract it. And then it recalculates and sure enough, the, the total of those three golden numbers equals what I need it to equal in 85.5. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that wonderful? I love doing cash flow statements because you know the answer. Now, this self-checking mechanism works when you do the entire cash flow statement. For this first test, you're only doing this section, right? And there's not really a self-checking mechanism. So that's why I said you should, you should do them twice, okay? So, what you're looking at, folks, well, first of all, any questions? Any questions? All right. What you're looking at is almost, almost a full cash flow statement, but it's not quite. Why is that? There's what no have header. I not done? There's that no you title need to, to it. You no need header. to title this thing up, okay? So, and I was, you know, in accounting one, I was, I was big on this, wasn't I? You need to prepare these in proper form. <coughs> this is OTW Corporation. You need the name of the company, the name of the statement. This is the statement of cash flows. And then you need to give it the proper period of time. This is for year ending, what is it? 12, 31, 15. Okay? So you need to have this title up here. Okay? You need to have that title up here. But now, if you look at this, what you're looking at there, well, you don't need this number, but what you're looking at, folks, is a complete cash flow statement prepared in very, very good form. Okay? So you learned something today, didn't you, Daniel? Okay? Oh, yeah. You learned how to do a complete cash flow statement. All right? Now, even though I don't test you on that, I think it's helpful to show you that. I mean, I'm, even though I don't test you on that in this test you're going to take here real quickly, I think it's helpful to go through this because it helps you with what you are going to be tested over. And eventually we're going we're to prepare a whole cash flow statement. You with me? Any questions on what we just did? Watch that again if you need to. But um, that is performing a complete cash flow statement. All right? All right. Let me give you your homework. We only have one more lecture and then we have the test. You have that review sheet so you can start studying for it, okay? Um, one thing that we're going to do, next period. Now, I gave you that time value of money sheet number three to try to kind of dust off the cobwebs and bring that TVM information back up to the top of your brain. Wasn't that nice of me? Okay. Now, this is going to be really nice to me. You're going to really thank me for this. Because at the beginning of the next lecture, we are going to have a quiz over bonds. A quiz over bonds. Okay? So remember those handouts that I did? Schrader, Goodman, Gustavo, Tungsten. It'll be kind of like one of those, kind of a condensed version of that. So. We're going to do a quiz over bonds at the beginning of the next lecture, okay? Um, you guys will take that off camera, but for, the, for you folks at home, I will show you the, the quiz and you can pause it and try to take it yourself, okay? So, and then here's the homework I want you to do. Um, and I would do them in this order. Do exercise 16-1 and then 16-3. 16, 4, and 16, 6, and then do quick study 16, 3. Exercise 16, 1, 16, 3, 16, 4, and 16, 6, and then quick study 16, 3. And then start studying for the test. We have one more lecture.
and then there's the test. All right, any questions? Do you feel like you learned a lot today? Creighton, did you learn a lot today? Yeah. That tingling that happens up here in between your ears, that's learning going on, okay? All right, we'll see you next time. Have a good one, bye-bye.